Hey everyone, welcome to Boomer Tech Adventures presentation on using your Photos app, specifically organizing and editing in the Photos app. This is a preview of a course, BT8 course, that was developed by colleague Jill Spencer. Here is a Boomer Tech Adventures crew you'll see and hear from today. Uh, from the left, Jill Spencer. I'm in the middle, Ed Brzee, and colleague Chris Toy. This was a live Zoom presentation in Maine Senior Guide's Cabin Fever Reliever event in late February 2021. Jill just started talking about using the Albums uh, tab in the Photos app, and we join her in progress. Rubs course, my family was up there, so all those are organized. Uh, then I've got one by February 5th, and then I've got one on a topic, my fluffy friends. So Apple creates these. Now these, you do have some control. You can go in and sometimes you can delete and add to them. Uh, it also under for you, you will find albums you have shared with others. It is possible to create an album and we'll do that in a little bit. And let's say you've been to a wedding and you were taking pictures and you want to share them with family mem members. You can put all your wedding pictures in an album that you've taken and then through email, you can share them uh, with others. Uh, here's just another example of here are my fluffy friends and here are a couple of them. So those are kind of fun to uh, look at if you wondered what that was all about. Uh, let's see, do we, we don't have anybody on Android tonight, do we? Hearing none, I will skip that. Okay, now you might want to create some albums. These are a great way of organizing your photos. If you take a lot of photos, uh, they're arranged in the photos or the library chronologically. However, again, if you say, oh, I know I have a picture of Auntie Jo, uh, but did I take that in 2017 or was it 2018? Sometimes it's difficult to um, remember exactly when you took a picture. So if you um, arrange your family pictures in an album, then you can quickly find them. So this is how you do that. My, Everybody with me? No. Do I need to go over anything before I go on how to create your own album? Hearing none. All right. So again, you need to be on albums. And I just want to go back um, and remind you that when you're working with albums on your iPhone, you will be down here. Make sure that albums is highlighted or if you are using your iPad and it's an iOS 14, make sure you have clicked on this square up here and you have found uh, the section called albums and click on it. All right, so when you click on it, you will see something that says my albums. And up here in the next picture, it's a little clear, there's a plus sign. Well, guess what that does? That allows you, there it is a little clearer, allows you to create your album where you are in control what goes in there. And when you do, you click on that plus, you will get a little dialog box and it will say new album or a new shared album. So if you were going to create an album that you wanted to share with people, you would click there. If you just want a new organizing album, you would just click on new album. And once you click on new album, another dialog box will click up. You can see the yellow arrow. And uh, what it wants you to do is to name this album. And so you need to think about it, be specific. Um, are you just going to have one big one that says family or are you going to have, um, you know, a family reunion in one album and family Christmas in another album? You have to think there's no one right way to do it. 
but you need to think about what makes sense for you. Same thing if you're, let's say you go um, somewhere, you go to Bar Harbor every summer. Well, you could create an album that just said Bar Harbor and dump all your Bar Harbor pictures in there. However, if you go every summer for 20 years, that's a lot of pictures. So if you did Bar Harbor 2016, Bar Harbor 2017, it would be a little bit more organized. Now, what you need to know is even when you put a image or a photo in an album, it does not take it out of the general photo sections. They're in both places. If you delete it in the general mm -hmm. photo section, it will also delete it in the album. The reverse is not true. If you delete something from an album, it does not delete it from the general photo section. Does that make sense? Yep. Any questions mm -hmm. about that? Um, Jill, I have a question. This is Dory speaking. Yes, Lori. Uh, if, if you create an album and then decide later that you want to share it, can you then share it after it's been made? Yes, and I'm going to show you how. Okay. Okay. Yep, thank you. You're welcome. All right. So you've made this album, you've named it. What happens next? Well, after you name it, what happens is a screen shows up with all the images you have in that photo section. And you simply go through and you tap on the ones you want to put in the album. And a blue circle, do you see it there? The blue circle with a white check mark will appear. If you change your mind, you just tap again and that blue circle disappears. But you choose the ones you want. What you gotta remember is you gotta remember to tap done because if you don't do that, you've just wasted a lot of time. And so then that album with that name will show up in my albums. It's the same process on an iPhone. You've got the plus, you tap on it, only now you see it's new album, new shared album down here rather than up top. You click on new album, uh, you name it, and then all your pictures appear and you can scroll through them, you can tap on them and uh, get that blue circle with the check mark. Don't forget to click on done. And then the album will show up uh, in your My Album section. You see it says My Albums up there. So that's all there is to that. Now, what if you want to add images to an existing album? Well, there are two ways to do that. Here's number one. You open the album you want to add pictures to. And when you do, up in the upper right-hand corner, you should see a select tab. So you click on that. And then here's the step that can be a little confusing. You have to remember to then click or tap on add. And on the iPhone, it's up here. On, I'm sorry, on the iPad, it's up top and the iPhone it's down at the bottom. Once you do that, all your photos appear. Again, you tap on the ones you want to add to this album and the blue circle with the white check mark will appear and you've got to remember to click on that done and those pictures will be added. Okay, so select the pictures, the blue circle appears with the white check mark, tap on done. Now here's the second. All right. So it's using the share option and this icon is the share option. And I'm going to take you through it. So what you do is you, instead of opening 
albums, you open your photo section. You see, you've all seen that years, months, days, all photos. So uh -huh. you open that section and then you see there's a select button. So you want to tap there. And again, you're going to tap the images you want to add, looking for that blue circle, with the white check mark. And then you're going to look for the share icon. Now, here it is on an iPad. Um, I'm not sure where it is on the iPhone. I'd have to look. It may be up at the top, but you'll find it. And once you share, tap on that, you will get. Um, screen. I'm going to blow this up so you can see it a little better. You will get uh, a screen that says add to album. And that's where you will go. The screen will appear and you will um, tap the album you want to share it on. Now, what I didn't answer was the question how you share something you've already done. So just give me a second here. Um, go to albums, enter. Oh, that's not where I thought it was. Um, I have to think about that for a minute. Hmm. Start with select all. Uh, okay. Add to share, add to album. I thought, I thought the share album was in, it's not. Okay, so Ed and Chris, I'm giving you a task. While I'm carrying on, one of you needs to figure out how you share an album that you didn't share originally. It's pretty simple. I've just forgotten how to do it. Okay. So we'll come back to that. We'll get that answered before the end. So it's fun to create, whoops, come back here. It's fun to create slideshows. You know, eventually we're going to get out of COVID isolation and you're going to want to share all the photos you've taken in the last year with family at the first family dinner. And so you want to put them in a slideshow and keep everybody entertained for 45 minutes. Well, it's pretty simple to do a slideshow. I'm in, uh, I've chosen an album. I've selected an album and you see the arrow is pointing to slideshow. So I'm simply going to tap that. When I do, slideshow will automatically begin. I don't have any control over that, but if I tap in the middle of the screen and it may be a long press, you may need to do a long press doesn't have to be a hard press. It just, you need to leave your finger there a couple seconds. And what will happen is this pause button down at the bottom will appear. And so you're gonna tap on pause and then you are going to tap on options. When you do that, you will see what your options are and you can have different themes, which is the way that the pictures are arranged. Uh, you can add different kinds of music. You can choose to repeat it, put it on a repeating uh, loop. Uh, a couple of different things you can do. And so that's, that's pretty straightforward. Again, you either need to create a new album that you want to uh, make a slideshow or you choose one of the albums you already have and you hit slideshow it starts 
pause it and then you can play around with theme and music and other options. So uh, that's something fun to try tonight after we get off. Jill, I have a question. This is Dee. Yes, Dee. Um, all right, the question was, oh, can you FaceTime and show, share your um, albums on FaceTime? Oh, that's a good question. I've never tried. Um, I would think so, but I've never tried it. Okay, you can do it on Zoom by sharing the screen, right? Yes. Okay. Um, but so I don't use FaceTime a lot because most of my family is not on Apple. Okay. And so uh, Chris or Ed, do you know the answer to that? Uh, this is Ed, I don't know that, but I'm gonna search for that right now. That is a great question too. That is. All right. So there's two questions Ed and Chris are che uh, checking for. One is um, how you share an album after you've created it and you didn't mark it shared. And the other is, can you share, um, can you share your um, slideshow via FaceTime? Cool. I hate to, I have one more question. Oh, no, Jill. go ahead. All right. I have my name, my, um, my new app. Album that I just set up, but I cut those from the album. Oh, okay. Um, let me call one up. Six. All right, just take me a second to get there. Photos, let me go to my. Uh, my albums. All right, pumpkins. You select the picture, you get the blue circle with the white check mark. I'm on my iPad. Down at the bottom is the trash can. On the iPhone, it'll be somewhere. So you can just trash it. It doesn't trash it from your photos. It just takes it out of your album. Do you see that? No, I, no, I, I don't see it. But um, I'm going to take your class. So, um. <laughs> OK, well, no, I'm again, in my, I'm in my album. And I've got 16 yeah. pictures, but I only want four. You only want four of them. Okay, so select, hit hit the select button. Do you see select? Oh, I get it. Okay, so I select the ones that I don't want and then right. I trash it. Thank okay. you. Perfect. Good. All right. Now, um, we're not gonna talk about Android, but there is an option be, beyond um, Apple uh, which is Google Photos. Does anybody use Google Photos? Well, let me just tell you this. Um, Google Photos is free. And uh, if you keep them in a smaller version, the images in a smaller pixel ver version, uh, it, it, it's unlimited. And uh, you have to have a Google account. And it is a way to back up your photos. Uh, the caveat is though, and um, if you decide to use it, you ought to email me because you don't want to delete anything from your phone before you have the message from Google Photos that is open. It's kind of a whole other course to create albums and to do slideshows. So if you start to get the message that you're uh, running out of space, you might want to investigate Google Photos. Uh, but you, you really should read your phone or your iPad. Um, and so on Google Photos, you, again, similar to um, Apple, you choose your dots. And anytime you see three dots, that means more. 
and I've clicked on and you see that slideshow is uh, one of the options as is edit album. So just for your keep in the back of your mind, if you take a lot of pictures and you start to run out of room on your phone, you can use Google Photos. Uh, the other caveat is though, when you sign up for it, you agree to Google's terms of agreement, which state in very small print that they reserve the right to use your photos. Mm. Uh, so that's something to think about. But I just wanted to let you know that that is another option. We don't need Android. All right. So let's talk about, let's move from albums to editing, which I think is the fun stuff. So before I leave albums, any questions? And Chris, I got and, one. yes. Um, when you go to delete one, it will say delete from album or just delete. So if you press the delete, will it delete from both? Probably. That may be the <laughs> future. future. Okay. But don't, don't, if you, if you hit delete, don't worry about it because one of your albums is recently deleted and you can go in there and retrieve any picture you've deleted uh, in the last 30 days. Okay, okay. does that make True. you feel better? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Jill, I have a partial answer. <laughs> um, Okay. And, and it's partial only because of the internet difficulty we're ha having here in Orno on my end. And every time that I open up um, a browser and try to try to do try to ask a question, it degrades the sound. So I've had to. So here's what I know very quickly. Can you share? Uh, can you do a screen share on a um, on FaceTime on a Mac? Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure yet about, I, I wasn't able to go far enough. What we'll do is answer a couple of these questions in tomorrow's Facebook and we'll let everybody know where that is. So I'm sorry, I can't go any further. Okay, great. And that's the same with the question on, um, like I said, I know it's a simple one. I'm just having a- Yeah. Jill, I put it on your mail. I just, I chat. I sent you the answer on the chat. Oh, cool. I can't see chat. So, oh. um, well, I'm up oh. like this, but I'll look before. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. If you, do you want me to explain it now? Go ahead. Explain it. Sure. Okay. Yes. If, you. if you're on um, your iPhone and you want to share them, and then at the top, if you're on the iPhone, you'll get the three dots. Ah. You open the dots and it will say share is one of your options. If you're on an iPad, open the album, select the photos you want, and there's one feature you can, and then the share feature will show up on the top left. You'll get the little icon. Okay. So very easy in both of them. Yep. Hey, Betty. Thank you. you. Betty, if you could yes. send, send that explanation to either Chris or me, or even better, everyone, if you don't mind. Can you just oh, copy no that? Problem. Yeah, that would be helpful sure. for everyone. Sure. Thank you. Yes, thank you. It. Yeah, uh, all of us is always smarter than any one of us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And this, this is I know a lot about Photos app, as you Chris and Ed, and all the time, you forget, or at least I do, forget how to do something. Uh, it's like anything else. If you're not doing it on a pretty regular basis, with all we've got in our brains, it's going to hide. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jill. Okay, yeah. Jill, this is Mary Sue. Can you combine albums? Um, not that I know of Merge. easily. I think what you would have to do is, um, I mean, you certainly can add the pick go back to photos right, and right. Uh, add them in. I've never tried to combine out um, albums. Easiest on a computer. 
Yeah, the I'm guessing I it's probably easier on a computer. In the old iPhoto, you know, you could merge things. Yeah, um, let me just do a quick search. Can you merge albums on an iPhone? Answer. It says um, you can. Um, if you create a new album, it will give you the option to add photos to this album. Simply navigate to where album A is, select your pictures, then navigate to album B, select your pictures there, do done. And these will copy over to your new album. Oh, okay. So Thank I've you. Never, I've never tried it. So you'll have to let us know. Go on to our Facebook. Okay. If you do it, let us know on our Facebook page. Okay. Thank you. All right. Great questions. Because again, it's something I never tried to do. Cool. I'm sorry. I have, this is D again. Yeah. Are you limited to how many albums you can have? Not as far as I know. Okay. Uh, they'll, let, not, they'll, they'll let you know. <laughs> right, that's true. Thank you. Yeah. I've never read anything and I've never exceeded it. So any other yeah. questions on albums? Yeah, I would I would say this is Chris. I would say you wouldn't be limited in the number of albums simply because remember the the images in your albums are really just copies of the images that you already have in your uh, sure. in your yeah. on, on your device yeah so you're not you know you're not going to use up a lot of space creating albums yeah okay thank you yeah yeah which goes to you know when I, when i buy a new iphone or a new ipad one of my um driving forces is to get the one with the most space that I can afford. So I have plenty of space, you know, storage space to play around with. Um, so it's just, again, something to think about. All right, let's talk about editing because this is the really fun, I think, the fun stuff. So ignore the Android. Uh, the first thing in, editing we're going to talk about is cropping. And that's the symbol over on the left. That's the cropping uh, symbol. So why do you want to crop? Well, it allows you uh, allows us to really focus on that main topic that we really want to have people look at. So we can sometimes get rid of extra people, traffic, um, and also, if you were with us last night, you know, we talked about composition guidelines, the rule of thirds, leading lines. Cropping allows you to take advantage of composition guidelines and create a better uh, composed image. Uh, cropping is better than pinching the image larger in the camera app. Uh, sometimes when you do that, it starts, um, it keeps the image sharper. Now you can crop to such a degree that you also pixelate. Um, so in my mind, it's one of my favorite editing tools. So let me show you an example. Now this, of course, is not a picture that I'm going to submit to photography today, but it's on the left is my picture of my pooch, Sammy. And uh, I've got all this extra space in front. And so I simply cropped him. And so you can see him better. You can see his markings better. And I got rid of all that extra wood in front. And I probably could have cropped it a little more. Now this one uh, is a pretty good picture. This was in my backyard. Uh, wow. It was a raccoon. She was not rabid. Uh, it was daytime. She was not rabid. It was obvious um, that she was a nursing mother. So she was in looking for uh, food and she was raiding my bird feeder. Um, 
Now I have to tell you that I did this one. I did do this one on my Mac, but I could have done it on an iPhone or an iPad. So the grid was there and I cropped. You see the cropping corners? Do you see them down there? At the corner of each picture, it's a little bolder. So I just moved those and I was able to crop. And so it looks like she's right in my face. So that, um, Here's another example. This is when I was traveling. You know, when you're traveling, all of these tacky tourists get in the way and I couldn't get rid of them. But I did have this picture of uh, this lovely walkway with these beautifully pink blooming trees. Uh, but when I took the picture, uh, I had too much of the stone walkway. So I was able to crop it and then take advantage of the leading lines of those rows of trees. And like I said, um, this is not Photoshop, so I couldn't get rid of the people, uh, but at least um, I think it's a better picture than uh, the first one. Now, this is what I think is really cool. So I'm in editing, I'm in the editing mode and you see over on tonight has a little of that highlighted. I've got some additional options. And if you look, so there's the editing tool icons. There's two triangles, right angle triangles back to back, and there is a uh, rectangle. If I tap on the triangles, it flips the image. If I use the square, it rotates the image. And I don't know if any of you have received pictures via email where the picture comes in on its slide uh, on its side and uh, it's not much fun to look at. So when that happens to me, I import them into my photos app and then I flip them and then I export them again. So that's um, kind of a nice feature. Then over here, number three, you see there are three icons. The first one at the top that looks like a globe with the equator, that will straighten your hor uh, horizon line. If you have tipped it, it will straighten it up. The two other icons will change the perspective. And I'm going to show you an example. And this is, like I said, this is fun. If you like to do artsy things, maybe create cards or calendars or posters, or maybe you do, um, oh, I don't know, uh, pamphlets for your church or civic organization, uh, you might like to change the perspective. So there's uh, a yellow daisy. Now I have changed the perspective. Whoops, wrong way. See, it's pointing straight. Ah, oh, wrong way. Here we go. Come on, fine. Now it's pointing slightly different. And you see over on the right, there's that slider bar. And that's how I control that perspective. I just move my finger up and down and the picture will actually change. So again, it's something to kind of have fun with. Here's another example of where I played around with the perspective. You see on the left, the uh, petunia is facing in one direction and I play around with it and it's facing in another and it's kind of elongated. So those are um, some things you can do in editing with the cropping. Not only can you uh, focus in on a main uh, part of your image, but you also can straighten the horizon, you can change the perspective a bit, and you can flip it. And again, um, whoops, somebody can, either Chris or um, Ed, Admit Sherry. I can't because I'm not a co-host. Oh, okay. I think Ed did. So I think we're set. Um, 
when I'm in full screen, I can't. Now, here is some really superpowers in editing. The adjustments. On uh, your phone, they're in one place, and on the iPad, they're another. And you see all these different icons, and there is a slider bar. So when you tap on them, the uh, explanation will come up. So I've, I've tapped on this one that's got the plus and the minus, and you will see that that means exposures. So that has to do with how much light there is. Um, this is what it looks like on the iPhone. Again, you see those icons on the bottom and you see the slider. They work the same way, they're just in a slightly different place. So here are some definitions as you go through those icons. I mentioned exposure. Uh, so that controls the overall brightness and darkness. So if you have a picture that is either overexposed or underexposed, you can fix it. Uh, brightness and contrast allow you to sharpen up different aspects of the image. So brightness, you can see um, it will make darker areas lighter and it will bring out some details where the contrast, just what it says, it, it, it sharpens the contrast between colors. And again, that slider bar is what controls it. Here's an example. And this is one where I should have used the horizon uh, and straightened it, but I didn't. So this is a nice picture, all those beautiful, um, differently covered houses were lovely. However, when I played with it, uh, in this case, I adjusted for exposure, brightness, and contrast. I made those colors more vibrant and the background, the green on the hillside is also a deeper, more, a richer green. So I took a, I think, you know, okay, an okay picture, but made it a little bit more striking. Here's another one. That's a nice rainbow. You obviously can tell it's a rainbow. Played around with exposure, brightness, and contrast, and I was able to make the rainbow colors stand out, pop, as the sky is bluer also beyond the clouds. And the tree, the green in the front is a little different also. So again, uh, you can play around with this sort of thing. Um, and like I said, take a picture that is, yeah, it's okay, it may even be good, but you can make it spectacular. And um, I traveled to Africa with a friend and she is quite the photographer. She, I mean, she traveled with a lens that was, I don't know, 10 feet, no, it was at least a foot long. Um, and when we got back from one of the game, every time we got back from a game drive, she sat right down, loaded the pictures onto her computer and she edited them right there and she trashed the ones that she didn't like. Now I'm not that disciplined, so I have all my lousy pictures taking up space as well. But if you're disciplined, you can do it right away. If not, it's fun to go in and play around. And again, you can do this on the run. If you're taking pictures that you're gonna text somebody, it does not take long to go to photos, go to edit and uh, crop it, get rid of stuff that you don't like and work on the, um, the colors. Now, see, we're coming up on uh, eight o'clock. We're almost done. Um, the filters are sometimes they're called effects. These are the three circles. Now I mentioned them yesterday that you can use these when you're using the camera app, but they also exist in editing and they allow you to give your um, image different looks. And so you see the, ob um, the many choices there. Uh, and again, you can turn uh, a color picture into a black and white. So again, some examples. On the left is the original, nice picture, but I thought I'd play around. And so I went for dramatic warm. And if you look at it, 
uh, there's just some subtle differences. For example, the sky is much, it's not so subtle, it's much different. It's a grayish green as opposed to a blue. Um, the color of the building is kind of a warmer cream than it is on the white. And again, it's, uh, it's your choice. In this case, uh, there's the original and I turned it into a black and white. So once again, the effects um, or the filters are fun to play with, uh, especially if you like to, you know, whether you're doing a slideshow or you're going to send somebody, send something uh, to someone, um, fun to play around with. Uh, nobody has an Android. And uh, I just want to talk about um, one, this is a third party app. It's called Snapseed. It gets a lot of positive reviews. It's, I think, pretty sure it's free. And it offers more, if you can believe it, more editing options. So the picture on the left uh, was a beautiful sunset down at, um, in York. And, uh, but I thought I'd play around with it. And I wanted to see if I could make it more like a postcard. And so uh, using Snapseed, and if you look, notice, Accentuate is highlighted in blue. And it really made those colors uh, much, uh, much more vibrant, much richer. Um, now, do I like that picture better? I don't know. I kind of like the softer pastels, uh, but it was fun to play with that. So you might want to try Snapseed. Here's just some of the um, tools you can. Uh, play with all sorts of things. And I'll show you a couple examples. Now, this is the one thing I really like about Snapseed uh, with the iPhone and the iPad is that you can erase things. You can do it on a Mac computer, but you can't do it on iPhone and iPad. So if you um, look at the picture in the upper left-hand corner, uh, it's my sister's cat, Nikki, and uh, in their house, there's a sprinkler. And uh, this is California where they have earthquakes and things like that. So um, most of the newer houses have sprinkler systems. And, uh, but that doesn't really add to the picture. So I used uh, one of the tools in Snapseed and you can see that I got rid of it. This is grunge. So again, giving different looks two pictures. Um, it's a flower and I thought it would be fun to see what grunge did and it gives it a whole different appearance. And uh, this in this one I layered several things on to get a spooky look. Uh, believe it or not, that is a cat that's right there. Editing, you might want to check out Snapseed. All right. So one last thing to show you, and then we'll go back to questions. If you go to your Photos app and you go to Media Types and you can choose a live photo to do this with, or you can take a live photo. And you remember from last night, live photos mean you've got a 1.5 second video before, and a 1.5 video after the still. And so uh, what you're gonna do is once you either take a live photo or you choose one in your media apps, you're going to very carefully swipe up with your finger on the picture and you will see effects. And it says loop, bounce, and long exposure. Let me show you what that is. Loop repeats that mini video over and over and over in a loop. So that 1.5 still 1.5 just keeps repeating it. Bounce sends that mini video forward and then back and then forward. 
Okay, let's, let me show you. Just take a minute to get the video. See how the little mini video. Mr. Buffalo uh, is, is going forward. Now I'm going to go to bounce. Just take a minute to get there. Forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. So those are those are kind of fun to play with, and you can put them in a slideshow or whatever. Then there's long exposure. And this is where it combines all the frames in that mini video, the still and the other mini video into a blurred image. And it's great when you're doing waterfalls, rivers, anything, especially with moving water. So this is the end of my street. There's a outlet pipe for the water department. And on the uh, left-hand side, you can see it was winter. You can see the water droplets coming out. You can see them individually. But when I tap on the long exposure, you will notice that see a blurred or individual droplets to iPhone. And then I believe that's the fountain of the Bellagio. Things that you can um, play around with. Okay. Um, stop that. So again, remember that you can create your albums for efficiency and entertainment. Um, you can take wonderful pictures with your iPhone's camera and think about your composition and the editing tools will help you turn those great pictures you took into absolutely stunning ones. And of course, the main thing is to have fun. So again, this has been Jill and uh, this is all in a course and I'm going to stop my share. Thanks for joining us today. This is Ed Brzee and my Boomer Tech Adventures colleagues, Jill Spencer and Chris Toy. We appreciate you letting us know about how Boomer Tech Adventures courses and workshop have helped you learn more about your iPhone, iPad, and Mac computer. If you like this workshop, you'll love our full course about editing and organizing your photos in your Photos app. Like our other courses, it is a fully self-paced course that will allow you to work at your own speed. The course is yours to use as long as you want forever. And remember that you have us, Jill, Chris, and Ed, to ask if you have any questions or issues. We currently have other courses with more in the works, as you can see. Courses like Introduction to Macintosh, Introduction to Zoom, several photography classes, and more. And as you can see, we are available at several locations. Our website, we have a, an active YouTube channel with over 100 uh, videos, and we're active with lots of tips and free information about uh, using your digital devices on Facebook. Uh, our courses are available through the marketplace on our website, and if you're interested in this photo apps course, please take a look there. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you in the next video.